Hey guys, it's Shaman here, and just starting out by saying this is completely unscripted, so sorry if it's a little bit cringe, but we're finally getting round to doing the 100 sub special. I'm sorry I committed the cardinal sin of finishing this video on the day I'm gonna release it, but I think you'll like it. I've been sent in a lot of questions by you guys to answer about myself or about mine Z or just about whatever, and I really appreciate all of you guys sending this stuff in. I didn't think that, you know, I would get this many replies. It kind of blows my mind, actually. It, it makes me think that, you know, even though we have 100 subscribers, which is such a big milestone, that our audience is much greater than 100, and I am super thankful for that. And so, as a kind of celebration, I've got a bunch of questions, like I said, that have been sent either by Discord, anonymously, or on my YouTube channel, and I'm gonna go through this video today just kind of answering these questions and just talking about whatever the hell. So, without further ado, let's get into the first question. The first questions I'm going to be looking at in this video are gonna be the ones which were on my YouTube channel, because they're the ones which are obviously public, and then I'll answer the questions which were sent to me anonymously. Uh, I'll then answer the ones which were sent to me anonymously in DMs. Starting with this set of questions by Ralph is my name. The first question he sent me is favorite town. So what's my favorite town in my Z basically? I would say um. I've always been a fan of Yongton Abbey because I have a lot of memories in that place. When I started out playing Mine Z, I always went to Yongton Abbey because that was the first place where I found iron. And I was like, this is the best place I know and I'm kind of scared to go anywhere else. So I'm just going to stick here for a bit. But looking at, you know, how my time playing Mine Z has gone on and like how much Mine Z has evolved, Yongton Abbey has become kind of outdated and kind of stale. So, I would say my favorite town is either Cyrus, because that's the other town I spent most of my time, and I just go there pretty much every single life to get food. Or, um, Grimdale, actually, because I, I love the rebuild. It's so good. Like, the fact that we're in a timeline where modern day Grimdale is a thing that exists, and we have a town that's just that big, that just... It just completely blows my mind. It has Thieves Guild, it has a bunch of food chests and pot chests. It's just so good and body offload is real close. So yeah, it's close, but it's between the two, Cyrus or Grimdale. The next question by Ralph is, my favorite game that isn't Mine-Z. Obviously my favorite game is Mine-Z, uh, but when it comes to other games, I kind of change my mind quite a lot. Like one time it's like, League of Legends, another it's Terraria, another I'm just playing whatever the hell on Nintendo Switch or the Xbox. I don't really have like a second favorite. If I had to say, it would probably be Terraria because that's the one which I kind of wait to play, you know, with friends the most, but I don't really have one. All right, so I'm gonna go rapid fire with Ralph's questions now. Do you have a dog or cat? If so, I demand pictures. No, I don't have a dog or a cat, but I do have six shamans. And finally, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? And what do you mean? An African or a European swallow? Okay, so I've just checked my YouTube comments and I realized that there was another question by Ralph, which I didn't originally notice. Uh, we've got this lovely question here. He's asking, what the frick is oatmeal? Uh, oatmeal is bad. Yeah, I said it. That's what oatmeal is. It's bad. Okay, this next question is from Jake Brown. Are you planning on becoming a builder for the Build the Earth project? I think I'm gonna need some help. The short answer is maybe. The long answer is it really depends because I kind of have a lot of commitments already and... I don't know how much free time I'll have during the summer because I'll have to balance out, you know, doing the stuff I want to do and then doing stuff with other people and there's a lot planned, not just for the channel and, you know, for my personal life, but yeah, I'm completely up to 
create a one-to-one -one scale for the Great Wall of China in Minecraft because I absolutely cherish my life. The next set of questions I've got is from Plubbles, and the first question he sent us is, what is your favorite section of Donnie's dungeon practice? I'm gonna start by saying, rest in peace Donnie's, you will be missed. But my favorite section of Donnie's was probably the parkour. I am actually a fan of fence parkour when it's not over lava and there's a bunch of fireballs being launched at you. <coughs> DCS. Are you for or against simping water spire lady? Well, Fridge did it, so I guess it's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, 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 oh you're asking if I'm for or against. Oh, I'm stupid. Yeah, like I said, uh, if, if Fridge is for it, I'm for it. Are you a fan of sock puppets? Uh, I've never really thought about it. I, I guess I'm not a fan, but they're pretty cool. Those worm things, however, that that they, oh, they are, they're good. And finally, what is your current theory about the purpose of the Origin Stone? You'll have to wait and see when the theory video comes out, my friend. Two questions here from Trade Hands. The first of which, what is your favorite change to Mind Z so far, post Origins or pre Origins? One of my favorites is probably the pre-Origins update when they reintroduced a bunch of the old legendaries and uh, added a bunch of new ones. Because if you don't know, the Secret Project update removed most of the old legendaries and made it so all dungeons, or if most dungeons besides some exceptions like Maze of the Tenth, uh, they all had random pools of nine uh, legendaries and there were no more besides Helmet of Vision from Maze of the Tenth, and of course the Elite Legendaries. So I really like that they reintroduced a bunch of the old ones, and uh, you know, I'm a huge sucker for Legendaries, so that was quite a big thing for me. His next question is, what makes Mindsies so enjoyable for you? Honestly, a lot of stuff makes Mindsy enjoyable for me. I, you know, I have a lot of friends in the MindZ community, I like, you know, speaking to the people. The game has such a rich history to talk about, you know, I like to talk about, like, the clan history and the history of the game, and, you know, I like to teach new players how to play, and there's just so much to do. There's, like, so many different play styles. You can be a dungeoneer, you can be a healer, you can be a PvPer, you can be a trader. There's honestly so much you can do if you like get into the community that it's really hard to you know stay away from the game for a long time because you've experienced all of these different play styles and you know that takes up a lot of your time so you don't get bored because you've got a lot to do and then when you do get bored and eventually kind of fizzle out you usually come back because you've played so many different play styles that one of them like sticks and and you miss it and you want to come back to playing it. Those are all the questions for Trade Hands, but he's also left us this really nice message. He says, great stuff, man, keep it up. It's support like this which really means a lot and sort of really, you know, pushes me to keep going. So I, I really appreciate this, thank you. Next, I've got a metric crap ton of questions from KReady2, and he's actually one of my most active fans. So thank you for coming to the video, dude, and thanks for all of these questions. To start out with, we've got the question, how did you find MindZ and what made you want to create MindZ videos? Like most people, I actually found MindZ from a YouTuber called AntVenom uh, back when I was kind of getting into Minecraft and, you know, didn't know a lot about it. I watched a lot of AntVenom and I have a lot of nostalgia for his old videos, which is kind of why you see a lot of his style in, you know, in my editing and you know, I've got the same sort of intro and outro music as he does, I've got the same kind of thumbnail style. It's all because it's basically just taken from Ant Venom, because I, I like, you know, I loved his old videos so much. Um, so that's how I found MindZ. When it came to me deciding to create videos, I, I never initially kind of, you know, started out making videos. I just started like live streaming one day. Um, and, you know, that was fun, and then I, you know, didn't really do it again for a whole load of time. But I was like, hey, the lore is kind of cool, it's a little disconnected, so let's piece it together. 
And that's, you know, kind of how my first lore video from the ashes of our world came to be. And it just kind of, you know, went up from there. I realized how many people liked the video. I enjoyed doing it. So I was like, let's make some more. Um, and, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing I enjoy. If I didn't enjoy doing it, I wouldn't do it. I'm just, you know, a huge fan of lore and games and... I watch a lot of Necrit, who's like a League of Legends guy. He he does League of Legends lore and stuff like that. Uh, so it, it just, you know, if it's any game of lore, I usually kind of latch onto that. And with Mind Z, because it's my favorite game, I just have like a special affinity to it. The next question from KReady2 is, what's your favorite legendary? My favorite legendary, it used to be Lone Sword. Because there's this story where one time I did an event and it was like a parkour event. Except whenever you died, you got spawned into the Mine Z lobby and you could use MZ spawn. So during this event, I spawned in and I ran Maze of the 10th and I got a Lone Sword from it. And I asked the staff, hey, I beat Maze of the 10th and I got the Lone Sword during this event. So can I please get a special item in Mind Z called the Shaman's Lone Sword? And that kind of became a meme. And the Shaman's Lone Sword actually exists now. I have three different variants of it. So because of the meme alone, and like because of that whole sort of story, the Lone Sword has been my favorite legendary for the longest time. But since the most recent PTR, I experimented with the Oni Mask, which is basically, it's a chain helmet, which if you're getting hit by a diamond sword, it reduces the damage you take by 40%, which, as you know, is a little bit good. So just because of how absolutely busted the legendary is, I think it's just my new favorite because you can just walk into a fight and just get slapped around and just not die and it's hilarious. My favorite dungeon, uh, it used to be Shrine of the Dusk. Before Origins came out, I love Shrine of the Dusk. It's just, you know, all of the puzzles were really fun. Like, you know, the Earth Troll, it's, it's difficult, but it's not like hard. Um, but like, you know, the, the Water Trial, the Fire Trial, just, it's a dungeon which I like to have a participating role in. It's like, sure, it's a dungeon where you can just get carried through it and, you know, let everyone else do the hard work. But I enjoy, you know, actually doing that dungeon. And it, it, it's been, you know, quite a fun dungeon to run. But ever since EHQ came out, like, just the features of that dungeon and... Oh, it's just, there are so many things in that dungeon which I just wonder how they even exist in Minecraft. Like, Pichu... PG is just a god at redstone and a god of command blocks. I have no clue how he does it, but the mechanics of that dungeon just blow Shrine of the Dusk out of the water, and for that, it's my new favorite. The next question is favorite death. <gasps> I know this one. Okay, okay. So there was a um, a bit of beef between me and Dawn Brigade, which was basically like a healer clan back in 2018. I was like an old member. But they, you know, they were told to kill me on site because, uh, you know, we kind of had a bit of a rivalry going on. Uh, and they were on their anniversary event and I just ran into the shifty bar in Pravis and just photobombed them. And it's it's just hilarious. Shout out to 111 Kitty Cat 111 for the clip. Here we go. I'll show you. Clara, He's coming behind us. <laughs> Don't try not to block other people. I don't have my No, no, calm down. <laughs> the next question is favorite run, and I'm gonna assume that means my favorite dungeon run. It would probably be a Shrine of the Dusk run, which I well, actually did in my first live stream on YouTube. Back in 2017, when I wasn't really sophisticated and, uh, you know, in the community, I did a dungeon run with Burned Apple Pie, who's one of the current leaders of Simon's Avengers, and Doriel C, who is a pretty infamous ex-member of Dawn Brigade. I, I did a dungeon run with them, 
and they basically carried me through it and it was a pretty wild run unfortunately i don't have the footage for it but we did beat it and a bunch of admins that were online at the time including murgatron uh unvanished and they all came to congratulate us and it was really surreal i wish i had the footage favorite part of the lore um i would probably have to say the whole juxtaposition between hestro and dentral's story in terms of like you know reality and the history of the world because Hestral doesn't tell us anything about Dentral or, you know, Helia uh, or Ascindia. He just keeps it a secret and, you know, makes us believe that these places never existed and that Axis Mundi is just the oldest place to have ever existed. There can be nothing else. Whereas Dentral is giving us the full story and, you know, he's got this library of, of events that we didn't even know happened. It kind of makes us wonder who's the one we should be trusting here. Maybe we shouldn't trust either of them. Maybe we should trust Dentral. It's just, it, it leaves us in a really interesting situation where we really don't know where this is going to go in terms of future Mindsy lore because we don't know who's the bad guy. And the final question from Kready2, in your opinion, most dangerous location and the least dangerous? Most dangerous is... It's definitely either Helltree or Alhassa. Alhassa, for obvious reasons. If you're not on PvE, you're going to get absolutely smacked. Uh, if you're on PvE, though, Helltree is definitely the most dangerous location because they've removed a lot of the safe spots, and when you get on the island, you're trapped in the middle of, you know, a lava ocean with a bunch of baby pigmen that will probably launch you to your doom. So it's it's pretty dangerous. More dangerous than Biosphere, in my opinion, because you can just run from Biosphere. You're trapped on a lava island if you go to Helltree. So I, I it just you know it just has the edge for me. As for the least dangerous location, I would say McLovinville because who goes there? Like I I I swear I haven't seen a single zombie in McLovinville in my life, and I've encountered a player there like a maximum of one time. So I, 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 I think it's probably, you know, it's just disregarded. I don't know anyone who goes there or has gone there for like the past however long. I've got two questions from Will Cam here. Unfortunately, I've already answered one of them because someone else also asked what my favorite dungeon is. But what is your favorite section of Sacrificial Pit? None of it, the loot room. <laughs> Sorry if I butcher this next name, but we've got three questions from Paul and Whitman. Do you have any ideas for those small monthly updates? We've seen that the monthly updates have kind of brought new features to the game every now and then. Like, the the loot overhaul update came in one of them. We've had rebuilds come in some of the other ones. And we're also getting, you know, quest systems probably going to come out as the next monthly update. As well as that, you know, that Dentral quest which was hinted. But when it comes to what we can expect, it's mainly just going to be rebuilds and stuff that dock codes for the game. So, you know, just additions and cosmetics and new features and stuff like that. How old are you? I'm 17 and I'm actually going to be 18 in two months. My birthday is on the 19th of September, and I'll try and actually get a video out on that day, so stay tuned. How could Mindsy get more players, not just updates, but bug fixes or marketing or something like that? I reckon the, the best way Shotbow could market by sort of not having to spend a lot of money on it is, well, yeah, first of all, like you said, bug fixes are an important thing. The game needs to be in a suitable state and there needs to be more to do. And then Doc actually has like a lot of ties to like YouTubers and stuff. So he could probably like get in touch with one of them, he, you know, like one of his friends and they might be willing to pop on Shopbo. So that would be kind of cool. The next four questions come from Jareth Rodriguez, and the first one is, what Mindsy dungeon do you want to be brought back the most? I really like Exalesco Tunnels. 
the mechanics are really fun and I, you know, it's got a lot of creative ideas such as the, the mini zombie uh, growing up or you get shrunk and the, the zombie becomes a giant because you've shrunk and you have to fight that giant toad because you've also shrunk. That's really cool, but the one which I want brought back the most is Chime Caverns because... Mainly because I was one of the first people to- well actually no, I was the first person to walk into that dungeon and actually complete the, the parkour at the beginning. So that's got a part of it and also I just like the fact that it had connections to the lore of Mind's E2. I just think that was cool. And also the mechanics weren't bad either, like having to, you know, shoot the zombies as they were like rising out of the ice, that was cool. The next question is, dumbest mindsy death. I actually had a really stupid death in Animos recently, like during the whole Origins period where we were like gathering the the stones, the ceiling stones. I was doing the the last difficult jump, like the the last hard jump before the boss room, right? And I there was no way I could fail it. But I started eating a mushroom stew halfway through the jump and I died and I'm so upset. The next question is my most clutch moment in Mindsy. This is another recent one. I went into body offload and I didn't bring enough potions so I ended up running out of potions. And I went into the boss room and then my sword broke so I was punching skeletons without a sword and I had no potions, and then I got bleeding. And somehow, by some miracle, I was able to punch the skeletons to death and defeat the boss room. I... I don't think I've had a more clutch moment. Like, it doesn't get closer than that. The final question is, how am I doing? I'm doing all right. I've been a little bored during the day because EU time zones suck. So my sleep schedule's basically become waking up for the US time zone to play with American friends. Uh, besides that, and maybe the occasional stomach cramp, I'm doing fine, but in this particular moment, it's 6am and I probably shouldn't be awake at this time. This next question comes from a good friend of mine, Jay Buzton. He asks, do you think that staff interacts enough with the wiki team? I would say that um, they didn't really used to, they kind of left us to do a lot of the stuff ourselves, but um, besides Pichu kind of helping with the renders and giving us like icons for certain things, the staff have been a lot more proactive with helping us out and looking out for us now. Jacob Small in particular has been giving us like the loot tables and the rarities and you know over time our life has just become a so much easier because of the admins and we're really grateful for it like nowadays the staff do interact with us a, a good enough amount i've got three more questions from zorok the great who is another good friend of mine he asks least favorite location i can oof, i can list a lot of places which i don't like from a build standpoint and no, just from an everything standpoint, anti-zombie fortress, why does that place still exist? Like, why has it not been nuked yet? It's garbage, dude. Nobody goes there. It doesn't look good. It looks horrendous. It looks so 2012. There is no reason to go there. All of the surroundings are- Just get rid of it, dude! Like, what? The next question is, best mindsy memory. It was probably the Shaman's Lone Sword event, like I explained earlier, you know, the whole reason why Lone Sword was my favorite legendary for the longest time. Either that, or it's probably when my first analysis got put on the official Shopbo Twitter. That was like a big moment for me. And I was like literally leaping around my house, like chanting for joy, because like that made me so happy. And that was when I kind of realized, like, I, you know, I was on to something, so... Uh, like, that, that... Yeah, that's got to be my favorite Mindsy moment, and my best Mindsy memory. 
And finally, the first person I ever met in Mine Z. This might come as a surprise to a lot of people, but this was back in 20, 2014 or 2013. I can't quite remember which year I joined. It was one of those two. Uh, you might know him. He was actually Cyclone43. And obviously, you'll all know him as like, you know, this blacklisted player, leader of the 501st, did a bunch of horrible stuff. Uh, kind of responsible for DDoSing me. Um, but basically, I had a different name back then, and this was before Cyclone was like in the UTC. He was just, you know, an average player back then. So, we just sort of met each other one time, and uh, whenever I saw him online, I would message him and be like, hey, and I swear we played like, t we played together like two times, because I would always message him whenever I saw him online, and then I think it got to the point where eventually he would just be like, yo, who are you, dude? I don't know. <laughs> but he was definitely the first person. So that's gonna be it for the YouTube comments, and the rest of the questions are gonna be anonymous because they were asked to me on Discord. The first one is... Are you gay? And the answer is NO! I'M NOT GAY! Okay, to give some context and so I don't appear insensitive for doing that, the person who sent me this question just did this because they wanted me to shout that in reference to this meme. Thank you for the $3 donation from I... I'm gay. Guys, I'm not gay. I'm... I'M NOT GAY! Basically, we are friends in another Discord and I just do this as a joke, so... But yeah, I'm, I'm not actually gay. This next question is, how long have I been a gamer? I've been a gamer since I was five and playing Club Penguin on my brother's account. That's actually where my old IGN, Egg One E, comes from. Uh, that was my account name on Club Penguin, so that's where that comes from. The next question is, what is the role of dragons in the lore of Mine Z? Where did they come from and where are they now? Uh, okay, y you'll have to hear me out on this one because this one takes a bit of explaining. As we know, there are a bunch of skeletons of, you know, dinosaurs and dragons scattered around like the gravel and the volcanic areas of the map. So like at Fort Kaj and at Dragon's Path and inside of Axis Mundi. Um, there's just a bunch of skeletons around and we don't really know why. And considering we haven't gotten any giant lore yet, we know in the old lore that they were like giant creatures that came from another land. They were never confirmed to be zombies, so it's possible that the giants are actually meant to be the dragons and the dinosaurs, like the skeletons that we see. And, you know, the reason why they're giants is because that's just a limitation of Minecraft. And also because that's how it's always been. That would explain why there is a giant in the middle of floating islands, because I don't see why a giant zombie would be there, but I can see why a giant dragon would be there. Again, there is no evidence to back this up. This is just, you know, my speculation. I've got four questions from the same person. The first one is, what's happening to Podcast Z? Okay, so Podcast Z is in a bit of a... Well, it, it, I, I spoke to Schroger about it uh, when Plus Who Plus quit the game. And we were like, well, I kind of want to try something else. Uh, like, I want to do live streams rather than Podcast Z. And also, Plus has quit, so this is going to make things a little bit difficult. If you want, we can do, like... Uh, podcasts on the Mind Z radio every time uh, or every now and then and he was like yeah I'm cool with that I understand so podcast Z is no more unfortunately uh, it will not be a thing until plus comes back if he does come back and yeah we're probably gonna be doing stuff on the Mind Z radio sometime the next question is face reveal when it's not happening for a hundred, I'm sorry, you're not getting my face. Maybe a thousand or something, I don't know. It, I'll definitely do it at a thousand, so go right ahead if you want to boost me to a thousand just to see my face. You can probably just dig it up. Like, 
you can look in any Discord I'm in and you can probably find a picture of my face. Like, I wouldn't imagine it's that hard, right? Have you got any videos other than theories planned? I do. Uh, I've actually, you know, got this uh, One Minute Mind Z video series kind of... They're all ready and I'm gonna try and do them in like a weekly sort of... I'm gonna keep a weekly release schedule, I'm, I'm hoping, until I've, you know, got all of the One Minute Mind Z videos out. Uh, and there's like 10 of them in total, I don't remember the exact numbers, but... And until, you know, until I get all of them out, it's going to be a video a week, so look forward to those. And then when those are done, I have also got something else in the works, which hasn't got anything to do with Mine Z, but it's being a pain in the, it's being a pain in the bum to edit, because Camtasia just doesn't play nice, dude. I'm thinking of switching to Sony Vegas, but... I don't want to pirate Sony Vegas because I don't want to get viruses, so... I'm in a bit of a weird spot, and there's just so much footage that it lags Camtasia. I might not be able to get it out anytime soon, but one thing which I do definitely know I want to get out is, uh, you know, uh, another series for MindZ besides One, my one Minute MindZ. So, you know, once that's out of the way, expect to see that, and expect to see it monthly. The second to last question of this entire Q&A is, have you ever been banned from Shopbo? Yes. Okay, I haven't been like perm banned or anything. It's not as bad as you think. In 2016 or something, or maybe 2017, when I was just like a, you know, still a bit of a toxic douchebag, I got reported for chat abuse on GG and I got like a three day ban. It's not that bad. Of course, I have moved on, and, you know, I, I've become a better person since then, so, you know, I just want to move on from that, so, I'm not fussed by it, like, Mystery was banned for, like, a whole year, and he's the lead of the network, so, goals, I guess. The last question is, have you thought about being on the Shopbo staff team, and if so, what would you want to do? Yes, I have, because I I really do, you know, want to help the network, and, you know, doing videos and just playing, and, you know, donating, buying all the cosmetics, that's, you know, good, but I have a load of time to kill in my life, and I wouldn't mind being an admin that just patrols around and, you know, helps people, because I love to help people out, and, you know, I want to help the network, which I've, you know, which I've helped for so long in, you know, much more ways than I already am. And I think being an admin would, you know, just be such a great way to do that. Um, I did also think of applying for Builder one time because I want to write the law, but I feel like besides writing the law, I would be a bit of a dead member of the team because I'm not a very good builder and my redstone is nowhere near as good as Pichu's. So, there we have it. That's actually all of the questions. I've been through all of them. My god, I... I can't believe there were so many. You guys have just absolutely bombarded me with these. And I really appreciate this. I, like... I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing more videos, and... I probably wouldn't enjoy them nearly as much if, you know, I didn't know how much you guys enjoyed them. So, I, I said thank you so many times, but I really cannot thank you enough. Anyway, if you enjoyed and you want to help me get to the next milestone, you can subscribe if you haven't already, or if not, just leave a like, or a comment, or whatever. Just all of that support, just, it doesn't matter what form of support it is, just any of it. It really, you know, I really appreciate it. And yeah, anyway guys, that's gonna be it. I hope you enjoyed this 100 sub special and I'm gonna give my voice a rest. It's 6.30 a.m. So yeah, I'll see you guys and take care everyone. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>